Hi, I'm Trip Clark. I'm Tom Lang, and this is Open Throttle 360. Open Throttle 360 presented by D&D Salvage, buyers of all types of scrap metal. Best prices, best service. For more information, visit dndsalvagepittsburgh.com. Welcome back. Open Throttle 360 is a new weekly motorsports show that covers just about anything in the tri-state area that has four wheels and an engine. From asphalt and dirt circle track racing, road course racing, vintage cars, car shows and drag racing, which happens to be my specialty. Yeah, we pretty much cover it all about motorsports. We're gonna to talk to track owners, we're gonna to talk to racers, we're gonna to talk to crew members, we're gonna to talk to fans, and give you a chance to see a lot of really nice cars. Speaking of really nice cars, we are at Fort Pitt Classic Cars in the heart of Sharpsburg in the old Fort Pitt Brewery, and you can look at some of the beautiful cars that are behind us. Unfortunately, Tripp and I don't get to drive any of them home today. No, or drink any of the beer they left behind. When was that they closed the brewery? 1958, believe 1958. it or not. 1958, wow. Do you, you ever drink the beer? Well, not once I became of age, no. <laughs> so anyway, whether you're into Falcons or whether you're into Ferraris, you're gonna see it on Open Throttle 360. If you wanna see some classic cars, you wanna go to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. This summer marked the 30th anniversary of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix, and it has grown into a premier event on the vintage racing circuit. Yeah, it has. I mean, people come from all over the country, all over the world to participate. It's a great event. It's marquee for our region as well. And it benefits the Autism Society of Pittsburgh as well as Allegheny Valley Schools. So a great event benefiting people as well. So it's, it's great all around. We were at Pittsburgh International Race Complex this summer for the preliminary events of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. I had the opportunity to have a chat with Dan Del Bianco, the executive director of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. We're at Pittsburgh International Race Complex for the historic races of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Joining us now is Dan Del Bianco, the executive director of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Uh, Dan, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Thanks for coming out to watch the event. Uh, you've joined about 5,000 people that rolled in here to watch our races. We appreciate it. Uh, could you give us a brief history of where the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix started and how it evolved to what it is now? It started 30 years ago back in 1983 as a one-day race through Shenley Park in Pittsburgh. And here we are 30 years later, 10 days of events, two race weekends, multiple car shows and parades and black tie galas. So it's, uh, it's grown quite a bit. And along the way, as it's grown, a lot of people have benefited from it. Uh, who does benefit from the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix? It's been the same two charities since day one. It's the Allegheny Valley School and the Autism Society of Pittsburgh. And, and those two organizations are actually very much a part of us as well. A lot of their staff and families are volunteers. And so here we are after 29 years, and we are at $2.95 million. So God willing, we'll get to $3 million this year. Now the focus this weekend is all racing, but next week when you get to Shenley Park, there's a lot more than just racing going on. That's right, you'll be watching the races from the, the golf course, which is filled with about 2,000 show cars, a couple of dozen sponsor tents, the big shop and save hospitality tent in the middle. And so it's watching from all the car shows and seeing the only vintage street race in our country is quite unique. And having uh, one race this weekend and a full separate race next weekend, uh, it's a great opportunity for the vintage racers to come to this area and get twice the racing opportunity for their travel dollar. We do. We actually have a, a, a discounted rate for those that enter both race weekends. I think almost a third of the people racing here will be racing in Shenley next week. Not necessarily the same cars. Uh, a lot of them have multiple cars for different tracks. And so we've even invented uh, an, an extra race at Shenley. It's free to anyone that competes on both race weekends. So we're trying to get them some more track time. Uh, what do you see in the future for the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix? 
You know, at, at 10 days, I think we're pushing the envelope with our 1,200 volunteers. They do an incredible job. So I don't see it growing outside of that time frame, but we're continually trying to just improve things, make things more efficient, and raise more money for the charities. Well, I've been coming to this particular event for seven years, and uh, I get a, a big thrill out of this. I, I think it's a great event for the racers and the spectators. And the car show at Shenley Park next Saturday, uh, I used to enter my motorcycle in that till uh, conflicts got in the way, but it's one of the finest car shows I've ever seen. It's terrific. Like I said, 2,000 cars out there supported by all of the local car clubs. So you've got vintage, classic, and you've got a lot of new cars in there as well. And then if you do love cars, almost every major manufacturer is represented there as a sponsor. So you'll see cars from brand new to 80 years old. Well, on behalf of all the car lovers and race fans out there, I want to thank you and all of your volunteers for the effort you put into this fine event. They do an incredible job. Thank you. This is Tom Lang reporting for Open Throttle 360. It's the Built Ford Tough Event at Glen Bush Ford in Apollo. Glen Bush is celebrating 40 years as the area's premier Ford truck dealer with the best deals ever on F-150 and Super Duty. Take advantage of clear-out pricing on the rugged and dependable F-150 with best-in-class towing and payload. The Ford Super Duty is all about power and performance, including exceptional fuel economy. Glen Bush has the inventory and their price to sell. Visit BushFord.com and check out the deals today. Now at Glen Bush Ford on the Hill in Apollo. I had never been a member of a fitness club before Club Julian, but when working out on my own just wasn't working, I realized I needed help. The thing that attracted me to Club Julian was that personal training was included in my membership. Working with a professional trainer not only helps me get results, it allows me to make the most of my fitness time. And that's really important because I'm on call 24-7 with my job and as a dad. Change your life one workout at a time at Club Julian 24-Hour Fitness. There's a lot of local businesses that support both the racing as well as the automotive community. Tom, as you know, from tires to sheet metal to engine building to bodywork. And if you've ever wondered where that sweet paint scheme you saw came from, it just might be the folks at GIS Automotive. If you've been driving around and see some pretty sweet cars with some pretty sweet paint jobs, there's a good chance it's the guys at GIS on Route 8. From customization to rasterization to just general collision work, these guys do it all. I'm here with Mark Gissendanner, also known as Giss to his friends, GIS Automotive. Mark, tell us a little bit about what you do at GIS Automotive. Well, we do mainly collision, but we do a full line of restoration and uh, custom painting. One of our goals is we know that everybody that has an old car has an everyday car. And a lot of people that have an everyday car have that Corvette stuffed in the back corner somewhere they've always wanted to get done, or the Camaro they always wanted to get done. And they come into the shop and they say, well, wait, we didn't know you did restoration too. My customers all walk in the door as customers, and normally they walk out as happy customers or friends. And I have a lot of friends that I've built over through the year because I've worked on their cars. And that's how I meet most of my friends, is doing it. Because you, if you get into a car and you've got a lot of time involved, you're gonna have that constant report with that guy all the time. So you're always gonna be talking to him. And next thing you know, guess what? You strike up a friendship and it's there forever. So Mark, tell me about this. You, you've got a pretty much a shell of a car. This is a 33 
Ford. Do you know the story behind this? Did he buy it as a frame or did he have it lying Well, the story the behind this is he was at a LA Roadster show and they had him on sale out there and he decided he needed to have one. His wife doesn't know he owns this one yet. <laughs> He's in the process of a... She'll find out sometime. All right, Mark, it looks like we're in a Zephyr. That's what the that's what it says on there, doesn't and it? I can read. The car belongs to Mike Tarquinio, local guy here in Pittsburgh. It's an original 32 body. I had it upstairs in the loft when he saw what he wanted to pull it out of storage and revitalize it. And I understand you got a pretty serious sound system in here, too. Yeah, we're sitting on about $4,000 worth of the sound system. Nice. You can't find anything on the car because the whole goal was to hide everything because we wanted to make it period correct, but we still wanted to have the modern stuff. All right, so tell me, what, what kind of car is this? A 1947 Pontiac Torpedo. Being a body shop owner, I couldn't have a flat black car. Yeah, so right. I wanted to make a bomber type car, like an airplane. That's why all the rivets are in the roof, what have you not. So my daughter stepped in, she started working on it with me. So this is a family car, basically. Yeah, we've all worked on it. My, my two boys and myself and uh, my daughter. And so tell me now, now, how do you drive this on Pittsburgh roads with it this low to the ground? Well, it actually has air ride on it, so it actually puts up, in, it gets up in the air so it a ride height. But when, it, when you pull into the parking lot and everyone's looking at the, the, the colors and the flames, and you hit the air and it loads it on the ground, people go, whoo, what the heck? <laughs> well, this is where we repair the everyday car on this side of the shop. The, the guys over here, it's the mainstay. This is how we make our living, repairing cars. This is where you can find a car that's been damaged. Mm -hmm. And in the end result, it's going to go to the paint, paint room, get painted, and be back together and, and hopefully back in your house, safe and sound, just the way it was before the accident. Now, do you have many uh, fathers come in with their sons or, you know, oh. have a car that was tied into the family somehow? And You know what, I, 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 we were fortunate to see a lot of that, you know, and then being a father and with kids, I really, really strive to have that young boy or girl be so involved in the build. I get them in the shop. I say, hey, come on down. We're going to be working on your car today do some sanding. So they get a little bit of experience of what it takes to do it, you know? So that's your recommendation to dads is to get their kid an old beat up car as a bonding sure, experience. Sure, yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, they're gonna start driving sooner or later. They're gonna respect a lot more. So kids, for Christmas, you're getting an old beat up car this year. <laughs> hey, you only have that much time to impress your kids. That's right. When they hit 18, you're done. I still haven't worked it yet. Okay. <laughs> there are all types of racing in our area, from asphalt, drag, road course, and of course, dirt racing. One of the oldest and most prestigious dirt tracks in the country is just up the road in Hartford, Ohio. Sharon Speedway, about an hour and a half northwest of Pittsburgh, is a 3 8 mile dirt and clay oval and is one of the oldest racetracks in the United States. Among the racing royalty who have raced there include Rusty Wallace, Lee Petty, Mike Claypack, Tony Stewart, and Dave Blaney. The Blaney family is part of the ownership group at Sharon Speedway and is operated by Dave's mom, Kate Blaney. Open Throttle 360 visited with Kate to talk about the track, its history, and her years in racing. We're at Sharon Speedway and joining us now is Kate Blaney. Kate, you've seen racing for six decades of racing now? Between being married to Lou, the mother of Dave and Dale, and uh, now the upcoming star of Ryan, uh, Grandma, uh, are you more famous for any one of those particular positions? I just like to think I'm a good mother. Other than that, I'm not famous for anything. Yeah, you may think that, but uh, your husband Lou was one of the greatest drivers ever to turn a wheel on the dirt tracks. And uh, your sons, uh, they're no slots themselves between the uh, sprint cars that they drove and uh, Ryan is on his way up. He got an awful lot of ink uh, a couple weeks ago in the nationwide race that he was in. You must be very proud. I am, and I was there, and that was a fun race to watch. It really was. Uh, in the years that you've been involved in racing, uh, what is the biggest change that you have seen? It's become very political, and I feel like we've lost our soul of really loving racing. It's more about money and fame, I guess. It definitely is that way at the top of the sport, but coming up here in a few weeks here at Sharon Speedway, we have a day dedicated to the family aspect of the sport, and that's the Lou Blaney Memorial. Yes. 
and uh, it has to be one of the most important nights for you and your family here at Sharon Speedway. It is. It really is. Well, on behalf of all the race fans, I would like to thank you and your family for all you've contributed to the sport over the years and uh, hope we can keep up the tradition that the Blaney's have set. I hope so. For Open Throttle 360, this is Tom Lang reporting at Sharon Speedway. More golf for less green. Cherry Creek is revolutionizing your golfing experience with our new premier membership. Unlimited golf, including cart, preferred tee times, and more. Lower price plans are also available. Call or visit our website for details. Best tires, parts, and service. Tire Town. That's a Frochick. I'm Bobic. Tom Bobic. Bobic Bookkeeping and Payroll. Visit us at Bobic.us. Welcome back to Open Throttle 360. Tom, as you know, the one thing we have a ton of in this area, it's really nice cars. And if the one place you can always count on to find a lot of them, it's the Wexford Starlight Car Cruise. Runs uh, Friday nights, May through August. That's right, Trip. And over the next few weeks, we're going to speak to some of the car owners out at the cruise. Matter of fact, last time we were there, I met a friend from the old neighborhood. Hey, who's that? Bob Mary. We're at the Wexford Starlight Car Cruise, and joining us now is Bob Mary. Uh, Bob, this is not your average Camaro. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's a Tom Henry Camaro. It's a Matt Murphy uh, worked on it. MGGM down in uh, Marietta, Georgia. It's got the uh, heads were done, new cam, headers, 411 gears, uh, been lowered. It's got uh, coated exhaust on it, headers, and uh, it's pretty nice. Now, you didn't do any of that stuff yourself. It came directly from Tom Henry with all those improvements. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, I didn't do anything to it. Just drive it. Okay, how does the performance of this car compare to the Corvettes you owned back in the 60s? Uh, not as good. Not near as good. <laughs> I mention that because uh, Bob had, back in the 60s, he had two Corvettes, a uh, 66 and a 68, the baddest cars in Northside, and uh, he was kind of known for those cars, but you're also known for blowing them up. Well, yeah, we did. Uh, the 68 was blown up on blocks more than it was running. <laughs> The 66 wasn't though, that ran pretty good. Sorry I got rid of that. But the 68, yeah, it, uh, that thing was blown up quite a bit, <laughs> yeah. I beat them up though, I mean, I, I played with them. <laughs> so the reliability of this car has it all over the Corvettes. Oh yeah, this got air conditioning, yeah, I mean, this is nice, yeah. But it doesn't have the performance of those, no way. I mean, well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. This is Tom Lang reporting for Open Throttle 360. Nice interview. Let me ask you this. Back in the day when you and Bob were growing up, how did you take footage of your car or take a look at what was underneath the hood? Well, back then we settled for a brownie camera or a Polaroid. No idea what a brownie camera is. Well, it was a Kodak camera. It was about the cheapest thing you could buy. It was point and shoot, very easy to use. Used film. Nice, nice film. What's that? You seen what they use today? Pretty high-tech stuff nowadays. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. One of the hottest ways to capture amazing action these days is with HD POV cameras, or high-definition point-of-view cameras, or in other words, GoPro. Industry giant GoPro has pretty much redefined how we view sports. You, the viewer, can now surf, base jump, experience a hole shot, get big air, and fly down a drag strip all from the convenience of your couch. In addition to the impressive footage, the crews are actually mounting these cameras in various locations on the race car to monitor the vehicle's performance. Yeah, it's neat stuff. In each episode of Open Throttle 360, we'll show some GoPro footage that we gathered from the area. And if you've got some GoPro footage and you want to share it with us, and maybe we'll even use it with the show, go to OpenThrottle360.com and follow the link on how to upload your video. Right now, here's a montage of some stuff we put together.
<laughs> That's a slow pick. I'm Bobic. Tom Bobic. Bobic Bookkeeping and Payroll. Visit us at bobic.us. At Tire Town. Only the finest service will Tire Town. Statistics show that a lack of sideways control or lateral grip is the cause of most winter accidents. Tire Town will make sure you have the right kind of tire to bite into the snow and grip the ice, reducing your chances of ending up somewhere you don't want to be. Don't take chances this winter. Visit Tire Town today, North Atherton Street, State College. Tire Town, quality customer service for you. It's one unbelievable value for one unbeatable price. Play unlimited golf, including cart, for a special introductory rate of just $59.95 a month. Lower price memberships are also available. Take advantage of this unprecedented offer only at Cherry Creek Golf Club. When you think dragsters, you think fast, loud, and big. But there's also fast, loud, and small. Yep, Tom, and there's a whole generation of young boys and girls that can barely see the steering wheel and certainly can't drive, but they fly down a drag strip. And every one of them has an entire family behind them coaching, preparing, and propelling them to victory lane in the Junior Dragster Series. All right, so we're here at Pittsburgh Raceway Park, and we're talking with Lauren. Lauren, what's your name? Lauren Domino. And Lauren, looks like you got a trophy sitting right next to you. Tell me what it is that you just did. Well, I was in the 8 to 12 class because I'm 11, and I won the first place trophy. Does it feel pretty good? Yeah. Tell me how long you've been racing, Lauren. Um, a year. I started last year in April. So you've just been racing a year, and you're already winning trophies? Yes. Wow, that feels pretty good. So tell me, what was it, what was it that actually got you into racing? Um, when I was eight, I wanted to race, but my dad thought I was too young, so we waited till I was 10, and I just asked him for a junior dragster, and he let me have one. Is your dad a racer? Yeah, sometimes. He doesn't really race anymore because me and my brother race. So what else do you like to do besides uh, race dragsters? I play basketball, softball, and I love to twirl batons and make drags. So twirl batons and race dragsters. Do you think a lot of girls your age do that? No. Okay, so tell me the kind of success that you've had racing. Have you won other trophies? Yes, I've won four. Three second place, and this will be my second first place, so actually five. This is your second first place trophy? Yes. That's great. And what do you do in the off season? To, do you prepare for racing uh, in the off season, or do you just do other stuff? I just do other stuff. So pretty much, when it's racing season, you jump in the race and you bring in first place trophies all the time, right? Yeah. Is it a friendly competition with the other people that you race against? Yeah, because I'm friends with most of them. All right. Well, very good job. Congratulations on the trophy, and I uh, wish you a lot of luck in your season. Thank you. I've never been thin. But after I had my son, I sort of hung on to the weight. I knew that I needed to change. Getting personal training as part of my Club Julia membership was huge. They keep me motivated and challenged. I've actually lost the weight of my seven-year-old son. He was my biggest motivating factor, and we can do so much more together now. I love coming here. I just love being me now. Change your life, one workout at a time, at Club Julian 24-Hour Fitness. In the Alakiski Valley, autumn is both a time to be inspired by transition and to embrace tradition. At Apollo Trust Company, we understand the changing needs of local customers, and we offer a complete line of products and services to meet them, including mortgage and home equity loans, installment and commercial loans, and even wealth management and trust services. Seasons change. You need a bank that will be there for you at every turn. Apollo Trust Company, a bank you can believe in. You know, the region's love of fast cars and good racing is about as deep as any place in the country. Here's some action from right in our own backyard.
uh, Pittsburgh Raceway Park, and I'm talking the... We're at Pittsburgh International Race Complex. So some bigger boards, some faster cars. You just drag race and then go home and watch SpongeBob. That's it for Open Throttle 360. In future episodes, we'll be reading viewer mail. So if you have any questions for me or Trip, comments or suggestions, send an email to info at openthrottle360.com. And make sure you visit us on the web, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.